Welcome back, everybody, to a lecture series, The World in 2050. My name is Roland Benedictor. I'm leading this lecture series. And today's guest is Marco Vilenius from Finland. And as many as you know, Finland is really, really leading the pack with regard to futures research, futures education, but also futures applications in governmental issues, so in governing. Uh, transformation. And uh, Professor Vilenius is certainly one of the most experienced and renowned figures on the scene. He's a, a renowned futurist and award winning also speaker and a particular importance professor at Finland Futures Research Center. Finland Futures Research Center is really one of the global examples of how to deal with futures. Marco Vilenius has been researching, publishing, and speaking about future studies for more than 25 years. And during this time, he has worked in basically all areas of future studies and sustainable development over the last 15 years. He has been working with various governments, businesses, public sectors, organizations, NGOs, using strategic intelligence to make key decisions. Most importantly, Marco is the UNESCO chair in learning for transformation and planetary futures at the University of Turku in Finland. I must say, Marco, one chair has one of my favorite names ever of all 900 chairs in the world. Um, and Marco is also the president of the Walter Alström and Luna Beckström Foundations and a support of innovation and sustainable technology development. So Marco, we are really looking forward to what you will tell us about the Finnish example of how to deal with futures. Marco, the stage is yours. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roland. It's really... Uh... Pleasure to be here um, um, talking about um, the Finnish experience and uh, my own experience about what is to work uh, with the future studies. Uh, of course, today our topic is particularly um, what to uh, uh, the futures literacy, but I also want to start with just telling more about uh, my center research center here in, in finland and my activities uh in in that center a little bit uh before moving into this uh topic matter and uh, earlier today i, I actually uh, I talked to my colleagues here uh, about the need to understand what are the types of the disruptions that we actually are going through uh in our world and I call this uh, approach that I have been developing uh, transformative foresight, because I feel that um, in a way, we are still a little bit sort of a lack in the tools to understand what are the dynamics behind and what are the kind of a correlations between the different events such as uh, war in Ukraine, pandemic, and accelerating climate change. And I see that there is uh, deeper connections there that, that we need to understand to make a more kind of a holistic kind of approach, uh, including uh, past, present, and, and future. Because I see that what the future is essentially does is that uh, uh, tries to connect uh, these different temporal aspects, but also to, to look at the different sectors in our societies and understand their interplay. So have this kind of a bird uh, eye view into, into, into where we are and understanding the deeper meaning of that. Now, um, I want to start sort of a sharing my, my presentation here. I hope it works. Um, uh, that you see this hopefully. Um, yeah. Is that so? Can I? Yes, it works perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, first of all, 
just a couple of words more of myself. I, I've been, uh, as Roland told, I've been uh, in this business of futures studies more than I actually remember, uh, which also tells that I'm, I'm, I'm rather old already by now, um, having shuffled uh, uh, somewhat uh, almost 30 years with that, with the topics. But um, what I really want to um, kind of underline here is that uh, since this is kind of a globally a still a little bit like a new profession, I think uh, being and becoming a future is always a, um, 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 a kind of a sequence of events and uh, which are very particular. In my case, I was a lucky one to, to get connected very early on in the 1990s with future studies as this Finland Futures Research Center was established in, in those times. And I, I started to work them uh, soon after its establishment. And, and I've been around the world quite a lot, but always coming back to my kind of a home base, intellectual home base, which is, which is our, our center. And, um, and, and when I sort of um, um, think about that, uh, what is um, what I wanted to say about this in the future, she said, center. So I, I just wanted to show you just a little bit what do we actually do. And this, uh, uh, this sort of a idea that it is really about uh, uh, the center, which tries to kind of a capture the very essence of uh, of, of what the future study should be and is, and we've been doing that. Uh, we have a three offices in Helsinki and Tampere and uh, Turku, of course, which is our main uh, main kind of a headquarters. All of that uh, has been kind of a, done in a, such a way that we have been actually, in a way, paving our own understanding what this academic future studies is all about and. And of course, over the years, we have done countless uh, exercises uh, with uh, uh, with different clients. Um, we are very much driven by external finance, so uh, we get a little bit from from the university. In other words, from the from our Ministry of Education, but but most of the most of our income actually uh, comes from the project that we get externally. Some of them are academic, some of them sort of a more uh, 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 um, a more sort of uh, um, a commercially based um, and everything in between. And, uh, and there is an ecosystem here in Finland, uh, 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 not only our center, but we have in the parliament, we have a parliament for the future. A futures committee inside the parliament, which I think was the first one in the world. Now we have a couple of more spread around, around, around the world, but it's still a pretty much unique. And also that uh, at the center of our government, also we have a uh, uh, we have a, a kind of a system of foresight. Uh, and I have been serving in a in a, in a quite a few bodies there to to help the government to, to understand what's coming next and how should we uh, anticipate uh, a future in a real way. And, and, and so uh, I would say that generally uh, there, is, um, uh, there is a certain, here's a certain attraction to, to futures related topics. It seems like we in Finland, um, uh, <laughs> the, uh, there is a sort of a acceptance that, that 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 is a relevant way of looking at things. Um, um, old French um, uh, uh, philosopher uh, Montesquieu, uh, back in the uh, 18th century, uh, he had this kind of a, um, a tenet about uh, uh, the role of the climate affecting the societies and the way societies work and operate. And I would say that uh, if you go high up in the latitudes, as, as here in Finland, uh, you probably um, are in the situation where you need to, you kind of learn out of the past 
uh, that you need to adapt very quickly into new circumstances and you need to use your resources very wisely because they are they are scattered around and 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 they are generally uh, quite scarce so i think that has had a certain imprint in the way that our societies work if you think for instance the the issue about around the equality which has always been a very important for 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 as long as we have had a uh, sort of an independent nation um, it, through our education system which is uh, free for all uh, from 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 the first sort of uh, from the primary education to tertiary education um, and many other examples sort of uh, shows that uh, that has been sort of a taken into the practice that uh, that uh, there is a there is an equality and equality actually prevails then when when again you have a scarce resource you need to use your resources as as efficiently as you can and this has a somewhat connection to my view to the future because what i see is that we are moving into the era where we start to look much much more um intimately this this where we can use our resources more wisely because obviously the the a lot of the problems that we currently face our world uh, uh, has to do with the fact that we are squandering our resources in an, in an enormous way, whether they are human resources, whether they are uh, natural resources, whether they are financial resources, all kinds of resources. And, uh, and this we need to change and, 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 and learn new ways and, and actually new mental models, how to how to deal more intelligently with that. So, so that 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 sort of a comes comes back to 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 some of the learnings that the, that the Finnish society has done over the course. Now, um, I want to say something about the um, uh, uh, wait. Did, did I miss something? Yeah, sorry. This is, has a this fancy. Well, yeah, this is the Finnish forest. This is first the Finnish forest, really. Way, um, so um, it is. Uh, it is really the the way that we have built this um, our our center over the years that that has sort of uh, uh, made it so that um, that we have been a bit of a forerunner building this kind of academic. Uh, center uh, and and that has to do with uh, also how we are connected with other parts of the society so here for instance um, um, Sara Sofia uh, Siren is one of the member oh sorry uh, I tried to keep it but I don't know how to keep this thing um, uh, a stock uh, that uh, it is a uh, it is this connectivity with, with between the different bodies and helping the different bodies here in Finland to to make use of the of the future studies and future thinking and anticipatory uh, 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 structure, so to say, to um, uh, which has helped also this uh, our sort of a role and our uh, our uh, uh, position here uh, to to foster. And uh, and uh, when I uh, look at the uh, 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 more deeper into to, to things that we are offering, we have a master studies, we have a doctor studies, but here I wanted to particularly to 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 say a little bit more about uh, Finna Futures Academy because very early on uh, we we introduced this kind of a new kind of a, and I think it's pretty innovative still. Uh, a, a model how we can kind of spread the word of the future studies and we did that by by creating uh, the kind of a network uh, of universities that wanted to sort of to introduce the future studies and and we sort of uh, said that okay uh, we can provide uh, materials for the courses and 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 we can teach your teachers uh, uh, or we can at least uh, help your teachers to to learn if they don't know enough about the future studies. We can give that, and 
uh, and we were able to spread quite widely into different uh, areas um, of, of Finland and, and providing opportunity for students uh, uh, in many universities to, to, to get their basics about the future studies. And, and so that's, uh, that has been, um, um, I think, a, a, a nice um, sort of a success story. Um, here you see uh, also that uh, you can, you can uh, what type of the uh, courses that we have had here, um, uh, what are the themes, and, um, and that has been um, a sort of uh, living example how we can, how we can sort of a spread wider than we would probably otherwise do by, for instance, just teaching in one of the one, one university so that so that uh, we really get and, and actually this has paved way for many of our students in our masters and doctorate programs to come in that they have got this kind of a introductory courses and have become interested in in, in future studies. Um, so so that has been um, um, the uh, 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 the one actually later this week is going to be um, this um, um, uh, for annual uh, conference that that we have. You can also register that online, which is called now Empowering Futures, Long Term Governance, Democracy, and Futures Research. Uh, and I happen to be the one that was launching the first one in 1998, I think. So there is a 25 years of, of, of doing that already. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so um, these are many other sort of initiatives uh, just have, have kind of a, made it possible so that, uh, so that we have had a, a rather wide influence um, and been kind of a, able to attract uh, people from widely different fronts also uh, teaching future studies to a, to a, um, um, to um, business people, which has also been essential because we are actually inside the the, the business school, and, and so there there has been sort of a natural connection. Okay, so uh, now I want to uh, talk more about the the topic. Uh, itself that uh, that was the futures literacy but i would like to start with just say a few words what we have learned from the past few years so what what you have learned that you know societies usually move only when there is a high high external pressure as we learned from what happened during the pandemic um we, we learned a lot about the toxic dependencies particularly in the case of the ukrainian war and um uh, and, and the dependence of uh, some of the European states, um, uh, particularly, but in general, in so many about, you know, how to create this kind of a toxic dependencies and how difficult it is to get out of that. So um, more from the kind of a systems perspective, but also the very fact that if we look at the climate change, and I did my, climate, I did my PhD on climate change in 97, and and which was the time when it was more like a, I would say not the not a, not the type of the phenomenon that we were reading a lot from from the media, but today, of course, it's there in a very different way. And then again, um, we still do a very little about it because we don't understand really the nature of the climate change and and the implications of that. Um, and and so that's also where. Uh, Future studies can be of, of, of great help. Generally, I would like to say that uh, all of these events just show that we are not anymore in any sense a, a control in what we are actually producing as a social system. And so uh, and that's the fundamental fact there. There is a too much complexity there. Uh, and, and that will also, uh, as we move towards the future, create much more ex events, and from the point of view of uh, of the of the of the learning and the teaching and 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 what 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 type of the futures literacy we need to have, uh, these observations are, are fundamental. 
because obviously this is not just a, something that is happening uh, and now it's there is a long tail to that actually there is a huge acceleration that started to take off somewhere in the 1950s um exponential development uh, called globalization took off with all kinds of implications that have produced now the type of the problems that we have um not only our use of natural resources obviously but so many others uh including this what i call the creative challenge which is that we are uh, even in the world of more information, we, we seem to be still very much uh, thinking that there is only one track forward uh, when it comes to developing our, our economies and our societies. And that model is very, very old fashioned. Um, as we move forward, uh, uh, the way that I, I like to picture the future and its connection to the past and the present is that I, I see the societies as, as moving in this kind of a 40 to 60 year long waves. And each of them have their own drivers. Uh, and now we are actually getting a carried away by the, by the new technologies, but technology is not everything. Uh, but, but, uh, but technologies that are becoming much more immersive than in the past. So it has a lot of, um, uh, 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 impact, uh, kind of increasing the impact on the way our societies work and function. And then if we look even beyond the present era, uh, which, uh, which we are now in the sixth way, according to my model, when we go to the seventh, uh, we start to see that uh, we start to sort of uh, emulate the 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 uh, in our technologies the world the way um living systems are working so it's kind of an extended version of the biomimicry that we already see which is taking place but i believe that in the latter part of the century this will be kind of a full-fledged uh, form and that is actually what is needed because otherwise uh we are we are too narrow we are too um uh, um, kind of a sectoral in a way that we understand how we should uh, have a kind of an impact and, and give a kind of a redirect our societal development. And uh, and when we just look at the, our, the challenges that we currently have, it's pretty obvious that uh, to, 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 to change the tide completely, to tr transform our societies, whether it's about you know, our consumption models, the amount of the CO2 emissions or the level of carbon concentration and the destruction of the nature in general, uh, all that kind of suggests that this is the last decade actually to, to start to make this move very seriously. That after that, it's gonna be a very hard, if not sort of impossible. And this is the one trend, for instance, that 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 is there that uh, that we need to break and that has not been able to to be broken this far even if we have had a tough negotiation about how to bring down the the the, the co2 emissions and the concentration now what does it mean in terms of the education and skills that we need in the future um i want to get you into kind of the perspective that I find relevant to to understand this, and and actually what I what I just talk is this kind of a framing of uh, of the uh, uh, of that issue that what what do we actually where what is the kind of a society we need to be learning for or what is the type of the future that we need to be learning for so uh, if we don't think about that in what what is the context we cannot provide the right type of the tools or uh, skills in this case and the capacity building that that is needed there. Um, and this has to do with the way that our societies, our working life, uh, uh, everything that happens in society is actually um, uh, um, uh, getting into the new stage where everything is basically decentralizing, which is not the case as long as 
uh, we had the system that had a very scarce amount of information. Now we have a surplus amount of information and uh, communication as well. And that in that type of the system, uh, distributed system is much more efficient. And that's where we that's where we head in, even if there is a very rock, rocky pathway to that. And um, because simply also uh, the the competencies that we we need uh, uh, in the in the life in 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 our lives as we move into to to do our specific contribution uh, are not the same as, as where where it was when we started to build this kind of a modern uh, education system. It is the requirements have almost completely change from those days and this is this is also one of the kind of contextual issues that we need to understand when we think about the what type of the futures literacy uh we know we need to uh um uh, building and there is a one interesting aspect of this which is that what is it that people want what is it where people see they needs and and this is the one study by world economic forum which was rather interesting from that perspective there were three things in particular people want to be creative they want to learn something new and they want to be able to influence so that it's not anymore enough that you just do your work and whatever it is and then go no much more people want to actually to be a, to be given something in giving back and contributing and uh, influence uh, simply in the world. And this has a lot of meaning when we think about, you know, what are the types of the skills that we, uh, uh, that we, that we want. If you look at this uh, list, this is also by World Economic Forum that has done this kind of an interesting work of, of compiling this type of information. When you, when you see what has been kind of an idea that what type of the, uh, 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 skills uh, we we need in the future we see that there is a stronger emphasis all the time more towards the creativity and also that more kind of an idea of how we are as as a whole as a whole human being not just uh, through our intellectual capacity but because most of the information we actually get are through our feelings and emotions so it's very important that we learn to deal with that but also uh, critical thinking to be able to assess the information that we get and uh, and 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 then this kind of a proactivity aspect of that uh, so that is sort of a paving a way um together uh, with my colleagues we have been kind of a building this idea that okay um what is the type of uh, uh, uh capacities that we need to uh build when we talk about the features literacy and basically we have divided in such a way that uh, we see that there is a first of all there's a certain cognitive capacities and then certain motivational capacities and then some, something that is called active skills and basically those cognitive capacities are are where we kind of uh, um, um, understand how the how the world sort of uh, works uh, and and how do we kind of deal with that with that with that with the information what is out there and how the, this is what is out there is kind of impacting our world motivational capacity is more like uh, how we, how do we create our personal sort of uh, relationship with the future and uh, and in my capacity as a UNESCO chair I have been uh, one of the things that we have been doing, and I've been doing quite extensively over the last eight to ten years, um, has been uh, uh, working with the schools as well. And what I see uh, in the schools, and uh, let's say uh, pupils from from fifteen to eighteen, is that a lot of them have a real problems of, of being emotionally uh, uh, connected to the future in a positive way to see themselves that they have a role to play in the future. And, and that is so crucial that they, they build this kind of a positive relationship. 
Uh, and then comes this third aspect of active skills that I will actually uh, explain a bit more because that's the part that you won't find in any other model of, of futures literacy. Is that, that, that has certainly uh, have come there because of my, my, my experience of what I see that, 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 is, that is needed. And, um, and that's why I want to explain a little bit where does this whole concept of active skills comes from. So basically it comes uh, out from, from the very idea that, um, uh, uh, that active skills kind of are the similar for the future as the, as the basic needs were up until this far when, when we have been creating our society. And, and it is, uh, and the active skills means that you are acting out to somebody else. You are, you are a contributor. You are, you are doing something. You make your dent in the world, small or big, but that's, that's the very idea of, of the active skills. Uh, and, and, um, what? Let me see. Mm. And this is, so the basis is, uh, of course, we, we know what's the Maslow hierarchy of needs and, 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 and that's, been, that's been there for the case. And that's where Maslow sort of landed his idea of, 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 of the needs. But actually he tells himself that, well, there is actually something which comes on the top of that, that we need to understand. Uh, uh, and, and it's not just, you know, actualizing yourself taking care of your, your important needs. But there is, there is actually more to that. So, so there is an, actually an evolution of the needs, uh, as, we, uh, as we say. And this evolution of the needs is something where we actually uh, start to build a very different kind of idea who we are as human beings. And of course, in this uh, short presentation, I, I just don't have a time to go deeper into that but to but to but to explain simply that uh um and i think if you if you look around you and particularly younger generation you you, you feel it very strongly that it's not enough anymore that you just try to take care of, care of yourself that that you don't find a meaning because there is a search for meaning in our lives and that meaning does not cannot come only simply for catering for yourself or for, for your family. It has to go uh, uh, larger than that. Uh, and, and that's how you create, uh, uh, that's how you create the meaning. And that's where this kind of active skills come into the play because we are actually creating a skills to contribute. Those are our needs for the future. Uh, and, uh, and, and there are four types of those. There are certain creativity skills, certain complexity skills, certain planetary living skills, and certain empathy skills. And, um, and when, we, when we think about the planetary living skills, so it is, it is the, the real question is that how do we create this healthy relationship? And it's sometimes it's very kind of a bodily experience, but it's, it is that, I have an impact to, to our physical environment, but do I know which kind of an impact or do I care about it? Which kind of an impact? Do, do, do I understand what is the sense of being healthy? Uh, is it about uh, uh, taking care of your body? Is it about the, uh, uh, taking care of your emotions and your nutrition, your stress level and, and, and what else? What about the spiritual needs? So, all of this is kind of a very closely connected to, to that we really understand what is the world and what is the nature around us. What is the kind of our physical environment over to, 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 to the kind of a, our built environment that we have, we, have, we, have, uh, we have done. And that has become in a very pressing issues. And, and in the future, we need to have a skills how we create this kind of a healthy relationship there. The second thing is that, uh, uh, that there is something which is called the complexity skills. And the very fact is that not only that our societies have become much more complex, but also that 
we need to have a totally new skill set how we are actually critically uh, um, sort of uh, evaluating uh, uh, the world around us. And at the same time, how we use our human skills to focus and to concentrate, where we know that, that actually a lot of studies says that uh, uh, that our our kind of a capacity to focus is going down. It's actually a beyond below the goldfish these days. It used to be twenty years above the goldfish. Now it's uh, as as the research says, it's it's below that. And and so uh, so that's that's something that uh, that we urgently need to create in order to not to lose uh, our kind of a. Uh, uh, sort of our human potential and creativity uh, uh, is really about how to find the new ways of looking at things and new solutions even if we are uh, 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 dealing with uh, old problems leave alone if we are dealing with the new problems so um, and, and and teaching this type of the creativity is uh, is to help people to understand how much more we can actually do with our our mind and uh, and we can become uh, much more uh, capable of contribute if we can train ourselves in 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 that creativity so my point is in in any of these skills that that they are trainable skills and they need to be trained uh, and if we don't train them uh, we 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 leave them uh, uh, a, a, too little attention at our peril, because uh, 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 then we are not capacitated to 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 really to contribute in our ever more complex world. And the last one uh, uh, of the of these four uh, active skills is what I call the empathy skills and. The world where we are migrating more and uh, and and where we are kind of encountering ever more cultural uh, perspectives that are not from our own background, from from the others, and we need to negotiate much more than we did in the past because of the increased connect connectivity at all sectors. Uh, it actually calls for this kind of a, a, a deeper understanding. How does things look from the perspective of the others? And so, uh, so, so those are then uh, the four sort of uh, 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 criteria and and skills for uh, for I would say twenty first century skills the way I understand it, and and they're very much like a human skills. So this is not to say that we still need to have a kind of a, particular professional skills yes we need those but i would say that these are the kind of a method skills that we that we need and because they are heavily future orientated and they are at their nature very active so they they actualize your potential to be active in the world that's why uh, that's why in my framework uh, it falls within this um, futures literacy the way we can understand the futures literacy is and so, uh, and so, those skills then are attached to these uh, key four challenges uh, that I see that our humanity as a as a whole uh, uh, is facing. And um, and and so that comes back to this what I showed you already earlier that uh, these challenges that we have created ourselves. So. Uh, so we need to have something new to bring in to, to get over these, uh, these problems and challenges that we have created ourselves. And for that sake, we, we need these new capacities uh, that I have been referring to. Then I want to sort of finish off by, uh, by referring uh, to our founder of our Futures Research Center here in Finland. Uh, and I think this message is very important. So that we we have uh, uh, we had this dramatic shift long time ago, hundred fifty thousand years ago or so, and after that we started to create this much more complex nervous system, uh, 
and and only through that uh, we actually were able to create a kind of a or become a kind of a human being that was able to uh, um, invent all these uh, uh, new technologies. But not only that, the the, the more complex uh, sort of social uh, uh, and cultural structures, and. Uh, and, and so with that, uh, there is a huge potential in, in these human skills. And, uh, and in positive sen sense, we are maybe only seeing the beginning of it. But, uh, but of course, in the, in the negative sense, we are, we are on the brink of the disaster. So it's time to really to move on and, and use that positive potential that we uh, have as, as human beings. So with it, I, I, I want to I want to uh, fin want to finish here. Um, I, 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 I try to follow my time as much as possible. So I have a I have a YouTube channel and also Instagram and, and even TikTok that you can follow uh, also my ideas there. But I also keep on conventional stuff like <laughs> producing books and articles. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, dear Marco. This was a truly inspiring lecture. I would even say uh, a human and humanistic impulse to all of us. And I think it is of particular relevance that you are one of the most uh, creative, I would say, innovators of futures literacy that we have currently in the community of UNESCO chairs worldwide, because I think the four active skills that you presented are really crucial for a future and they transform many of the patterns that we had in the past. So what you proposed is kind of a planetary consciousness or as I call it sometimes environmental resonance. Mm -hmm. Second, um, the capacity of deal with complexity. Third, the capacity of being creative and fourth, perhaps most important for holding them, the other ones together, to be capable of empathy, uh, which in a technocratic world, we sometimes forget that it is crucial for our humanity. Now, dear um, participants, Marco is so kind to now take your questions, if there are any from my side. Um, I would like to invite you to type your questions into the chat function so we will collect them and forward them to Marco. From my side, certainly uh, there are many, many questions, but I would like to start here, Marco, with your kind permission to ask the double question, um, which I think is the first that comes into mind when listening to your presentation. First, how can we learn these four new capacities? Uh, or to put it in a more technical framework, what, what kind of education do we need and who is working concretely on such an education that will lead us to these four capacities? And my second question is, how can we make really an impact by using your input uh, for a better good government. As we know, one of the biggest problems we have is that our governmental systems are not sufficient to really get into these four dimensions, to create a planetary consciousness, to be more empathetic, to be more creative, and so on. So. I know that Finland is really leading uh, in the experiment of introducing anticipatory innovation government or governance. And that means that uh, Finland is really, as you mentioned, not only in parliament, but also in the office of the prime minister, introducing new kind of systematic governmental approaches uh, that would um, enhance our capacity to get a, at least closer to these uh, active skills. So please, perhaps you can start with the education system, but then I'm really interested in knowing more about how do you do this in yeah. the government. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Roland. Um, important questions. And when I started to develop this, um, 
this model together with my colleagues, not only here in Finland, but actually I have also some colleagues joining me around the world. Um, uh, I also wanted to uh, quite early on to start to test it with the with actually our education system. So I went to our central government uh, government agency and that is taking care of our education system, but in particularly our primary and secondary education system. And and I and I uh, and I and I kind of started to challenge them. And then uh, and we created um, uh, this idea that uh, okay. Um, you cannot approach these skills in the same way that you have approached that, okay, let's have a subject of biology and let's have a subject of geography. Uh, you cannot, uh, it has to be more than that. So, uh, because in fact, when you look at these four uh, meta skills, um, the most important thing is that, 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 that any teacher taking any, any topic, a, a subject in the school, should look at from this perspective how they how what are the kind of a what is the pedagogy there and how how you can kind of build the type of the pedagogy that kind of involves this aspect because that was that was what I was thinking that this is the only way to do that in the real way but you can do different kind of interventions so for instance I had a one school here in Helsinki which is the international school so they have a lot of English there and internationality was the theme so I thought that we're they were also quite open uh, for this type of approach. So we did, uh, we did a lot of work with, with the teachers there. And yes, we had a course on, on, on kind of a future stuff. But in addition to that, we also started to work with the, and we went through to work with the, with the, with the people there. And, and, um, and it was interesting, this, uh, this feedback that came from there, uh, and very positive indeed. And, uh, but it's also something that uh, uh, is not easy uh, because the teachers are of course uh, quite loaded in the schools and they have their own ways of doing things. And, and so, so it's not that easy, but I, I saw that there was a, there was a way to, to, to how you can actually um, uh, uh, introduce this and, 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 and make it a, make it a real. And of course, we thought about the practical examples how you can actually practice this each kind of a each kind of a, a, a skills and um, and simply this kind of a focus exercises, for instance, with the complexity skills. We'll just first sort of open up that hey, this is a complexity skills. And you know what? Uh, uh, when we were there 20, 30 years ago. We didn't have a, such an information flow. We didn't have the problem of splitting our days into ever more uh, kind of a part, uh, and 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 uh, and the life was a little bit different at that time. Uh, but uh, but just because it has changed, and and we have a hard time to adapt to that, we need to create this type of the new skills that enable us to to screen the information and. And, and be focused and understand uh, the sources of the information that we are using. And, and, and sort of, um, and, and of course, that is again, the topic that goes to any particular uh, uh, topic and subject in, in the schools or in the universities for that sake. So, uh, but we are still in kind of a, Kind of an explorative stage. Although I, I, I was also impressed how our central agencies was, was ready to pick up these themes and start to work on their way to 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 help the schools to understand what type of the skills uh, the, uh, the young people need in the future. To your second question, um, yes, uh, I have had the privilege to to work inside many governmental bodies, and I want to mention a particular one. Uh, which is uh, which is a small body inside uh, our prime minister office, and prime prime minister office is kind of a, obviously a kind of a central body of also connecting different ministries, and uh, and and there is this uh, there is kind of a, a a body which is called kind of a navigation, uh, where we, which uh, which uh, kind of overlooks uh, the foresight system in in Finland, but also uh addresses topical issues what where should we be looking next because 
uh, there was created uh, uh, already some time ago a system that every government that usually our governments are pretty long, so they last for years and then they change another government comes in. Every government sort of gives its own future report uh, uh, to the parliament. And, and the idea is that launching that is not uh, that it's only going for the, to the parliament, but it's also launched to the wider public. And, and thereby sort of uh, uh, helping to, to, to navigate uh, a, a, and anticipate indeed what what the governance system needs to be doing to to be ready for for new uh, uh, new innovation, new issues to appear, or to be ready for new upcoming risk. And um, and I think that there is already somewhat I would say that tradition to do that. And 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 we are probably quite high ranking in the world in 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 the way that we have been building that but because also we have this futures committee in the Finnish parliament that we have also some other bodies that are essential including our center that are essential are kind of a, this national uh, foresight system so um, so indeed there are some um, instances here that sort of show that yes this this is relevant this has had an impact and um, and it's a part of kind of a Finland's relative success. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the main effects may be that it creates an acceptance, a general acceptance of talking about the future at all. Because I see that our people very often are really clinging to the present, to planning the next few steps. And to talk about the future is sometimes even considered as inappropriate. So creating a culture of talking about futures, maybe also long distant futures, I think that is one of the main positive effects of working. You are absolutely, you're absolutely right. Actually, when you are paving the way something new like this, it's uh, you you need to think is that uh, you are you, you necessarily you you need to look at your accomplishments here as also as something that okay, I'm paving the way for the for the for the next ones to come in and 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 have it much more simpler uh, and easy sort of a gain and access in into the system that that we have had so 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 that this has been really uh, that type of the often that type of the work to be kind of a pioneer in the field yes great now we have another question by Ingrid Geyer who asks thank you for this inspiring lecture what learning opportunities do you see for implementing transformative thinking and action in higher education? I guess we cannot learn these skills only in theory. What methods and forms of learning are needed, for example, in teacher education? Hmm. Um, yeah, very good question, actually. And um, I think. Um, that moving on um we need to get as much as possible out of this old learning model when you are learning things from from the books i love books myself <laughs> uh, but what i mean is that, that um that the way we can do this kind of a, a learning which is truly an experience which again means that you need to you need to be active and and that's beyond uh, reading the textbooks so the more i see that the education is moving at every level also in the university level if i think about my students in the master's course and i ask them what has been the most enjoyable Usually, and, and, and not just enjoyable, but useful, they always say that, well, if we go out and explore something, you know, we, we go to, uh, to learn the strategies and the visions of the companies, for instance, if that is the kind of a strategic foresight type of the more commercially oriented kind of a course, uh, they love that. And then they, the, the assignments and the task and, and, and the challenge that 
uh, that they have to kind of be um, uh, meeting there to uh, to understand uh, uh, where where these entities are, what are their future possibilities, and to go beyond what they represent and and see them in another context. All this kind of a work where, where you are actively doing something that the learning by by doing in that sense, I think it's still very much undervalued in in our school system at all levels. And uh, and and my all my experience, also my own personal experience, when I think about my school days, the most that I learn, uh, I, I remember about it is when those when those kind of excursion and the trips and the and and all of that, where I where I was actually actively involved with something to, to do a research project in a way. So this is something that uh, I encourage very much. Uh, in moving away from this kind of a classic uh, of a classroom um, uh, uh, teaching and more towards this kind of a experiential uh, 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 teaching methods and pedagogics, and only through that. I think we get a deeper understanding of, and not just understanding, actually we create those skills that I was promoting there because those skills you actually learn only by doing and, 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 and seeing the results of that doing. Um, so it's the same thing as then when you, when you change your diet, you want to, when you want to take your kilos off or you to just, feel better and and but you cannot you cannot just uh, read the books and and learn about that you need to be doing that get that experience then find out okay what's the difference and so yeah. this is the, this is definitely the, my my idea of how this how this uh how this whole system of education should be moving towards yeah anyway you are completely right but we should read your upcoming book Marco, <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> because it's important. Uh, Ingrid Gaia replies shortly, and this is from Ingrid Gaia. I quote, I totally agree. Unfortunately, it is also undervalued here in Austria. Experiences outside universities are the most important learning experiences unless they are reflected. Marco, this are, is the final um, reply. Maybe you want shortly uh, comment on, upon it, Marco, and then we finish our lecture. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yes, I, I, I can, I can feel you <laughs> that uh, that it is really uh, this is really um, a, a, a problem, uh, and uh, and that's why I, uh, I think we need to we need to help. In our part to actually to to overcome that 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 problem, I'm actually writing a book about the disruptions and how to manage disruptions, and an essential part of that message will be that um, that uh, that uh, the world that is getting kind of a more crazy every day, more complex and more surprises coming. The only way we can deal with that type of the world is that uh, we are just not kind of uh, watching that sort of a helplessly, but we try to make our part there. And, and if that would be the kind of a theme of the learning in the future uh, in these different levels of education, then I think that we will, we will be able to create so much more positive expectations and in, in that type of the personal anticipatory governance so that uh, help to see also what we can do in this world and, uh, and, and, and create this kind of a more positive attitude towards future. Thank you so much, uh, dear Marco. These were the final words. I, for myself, take away four questions. Do we have a planetary consciousness? Are we creative enough? Are we complexity adequate enough? And most importantly, are we empathetic enough? These are the questions we should work upon addressing futures ahead. Marco, you give us so, such a really important input. I'm really looking forward to continuing working with you 
It has been a really great pleasure and honor to have you, Marco. Continue your important work, and we are looking forward to what comes next. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Roland. Thank you really. Thank you very much for the invitation, and Kiara. Also, thank you very much for your for your help in this out. So great to have been with you. And to the participants, uh, participants, I want to thank uh, also very much. Our next lecture is from the Klagenfurt chair, uh, who will address the option of um, renewing the future in responsible ways. So stay with us, be with us again. Goodbye for today and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.